hello how are you welcome back to my youtube channel it's a brand new week brand new video and if it's friday you know that there is a new video on my channel my name is doreen Mora moracha a young woman living with hiv and also the host of this amazing uh, youtube channel and today i am bringing you a brand new video on uh, matters arvs for people living with hiv that is more we're going to discuss more on the treatment levels but before we get into it i want to thank everybody for the support and love on last week's video let us continue like that if you're new here please click on the subscribe button like share leave a lovely comment and turn on your post notifications so that every friday you do not get to miss any video i have done very many amazing videos so you can go back and watch all of them uh to my people who have been here since we started this journey two years ago i just want to say thank you and continue with the love and support so without further ado today's video so uh today i am going to be speaking about arvs that is antiretrovirals I am going to start with a small story, okay? Uh, so for the first, I was born with HIV and for the first 13 years of my life, I was not on any form of treatment. A lot of people question that and they ask, we thought that if you're living with HIV, then uh, once you're diagnosed and there is not, and you're not on treatment, then you're supposed to die. Well, it doesn't happen to everybody. My brother, I lost my brother to no, to lack of treatment, but for some reason, because of God's grace, yeah, I am right. But then I was on no treatment at all. Why? ARVs were expensive. HIV has been with us for 41 years. Yes, like, but most of the lifespan of HIV, there was no treatment. Just the way we saw when COVID came and people were trying to figure out how to treat COVID with no information about the new virus. So that is what happens to, with pandemics. It kind of throws people into a frenzy where they're kind of confused and don't know what to do and they try to figure things out. And that is why we lost 30 million people to HIV and AIDS way back because we had no treatment. So in 2004, Kenya, I don't know about other countries, but Kenya specifically got its first batch of free ARVs publicly. I am part of the people who started ARVs that time. So I started my ARVs in 2005, that is a year later. So when I started, I was started on first line treatment. So for HIV or rather for ARV medications, there are three treatment lines. So we have first line, we have second line and we have third line. Why am I giving you this information? It's because people keep asking me, why am I taking one pill? And I know somebody who was born with HIV and they're taking two pills or three pills. So I am going to break it down to you in a very simple manner, in a language that you can understand, in a language that we can, that has nothing to do with the science or doctoral part of it <laughs> so doctors and scientists if you're watching this video this is not for you let us meet at the clinic okay so uh first line treatment is the current arv regimen that we are on if once you get tested you have a cd4 count cd4 count is like uh the number of white blood cells sort of something of that sort it's like the level of immunity in your body i am trying to find the the simplest easiest way of making it understandable to you so cd4 count cells when they are less than 350 you are started on first line medication first line is the one that we are on currently i am on tld regimen which is tenofovir lamovidine and dolitegravir in fact i was today years old when i learned that those three combinations don't have the same measurements like <laughs> for example tenofovir has like 300 milligrams uh lamovidine has 300 and i think dolitegravir has 400 if i'm not wrong I, I will go back to check. <laughs> I will go back to check so you will see on the video. I am not very sure I've forgotten, but I saw it. The, the number does not match, okay? So uh, what does this mean? These are three medications put into one tablet. So there are people who are taking tenofovir and lamovidin as one medication and dolutegravir as another one. That is still a whole different uh, thing, okay? But they're not taking it together. 
so this medication they should marry each other at some point which means last uh last i think in 2020 was the last time when uh, i was on the tle regimen tle stands for tenofovir lamuvidine and efavirenz so you realize they removed the efavirenz and put in durutegravil so that it can become a stronger combination pill so this is a three-in-one pill right but still it is used as first line medication so it is first line it is basic let me put it in a way that it is basic medication it is like the entry point nikama kuingia class one like you are now entering class one you see we all enter class one we learn a e e o u abakada all those things right so it's basic like it's for the starting point for everybody but there are people who don't do all oh, these another regimen for first line it's atazanavir uh it's an it's the regimen for atazanavir i've forgotten the other two medications but it's not combination it is i think three pills but it is still for first line it is not for i think it's if it's not two it's three pills but it is not for second line so it's still first line but still more pills right and then the people who are still on first line and they take one pill right so let us go to second line so first line you have started you are doing well and then you realize mm, what is the point of taking this medication every day so sometimes you take sometimes you don't take sometimes you skip time so like you know all the play 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 and then the first line treatment refuses you or rather you are rejected by the treatment or you get treatment um fatigue and then the medication just kind of does not work for you that particular regimen like maybe dolutegravil does not work for you totally and it's allergic and it just refuses you so the doctors decide to give you another regimen but this regimen is now in second line because according to the who guidelines there are different regimens for different treatment lines so now we are on second line so second line has more treatment uh harsher regimens but also they can be friendlier to the person depending with the person so when you reach second line you are kind of now like a flagged patient i know there's not we are not supposed to call uh, any patient flagged but sometimes by the time you're going one level up to the treatment level it means that you're doing badly on treatment so that is why most of the time you might find yourself like um uh, you getting treatment stockouts because the thing about second line treatment some of the regimens are not very regular so you might find like sometimes they have stockouts you have to buy you have to borrow from one uh facility to the other like especially when we had stockouts people on second line and third line really had a lot of issues in fact i got to see sorry medication that i had never seen in my life because there were stockouts and somebody was asking me where can i get this pill where can i get this pill we had to i had to refer some of them to particular organ, um particular hospitals to get them but the hospitals because we, we all had the stockouts most of the time when stockouts happen second line and third line our clients really do go through much because for them their regiments some of their regiments are not very available okay so you can find that like you have one pill that is the combination of two pills and then there is the third one that is supposed to make it a whole combination and then it's missing that is what i mean <laughs> i am really trying here guys i am really trying so so far i really hope we are together so let us go to now what happens or rather how do you end up out of first line and second line and now you find yourself on third line so that means first line you failed completely completely second line you have come you have done jokes maybe you have also like some you have um some of the treatment regimens there you, when i say regimens i mean the type like you may find you are not uh atazanavir does not like you because sometimes ARVs also have their own pride like zikona maringo so sometimes they may just decide not to like you you didn't do anything wrong they just don't like you and there is one particular case of somebody who i know uh, that actually failed on all treatment lines so you might be an unfortunate person like that sadly but it doesn't happen every other time however if you fail on first line some most times there is something work to work for you on second line so if you have failed first line second line you have come you have failed completely now they take you to third line 
So that line is a rare combination of medication. In fact, the first time a client showed me third line medication, I don't even know the names of that treatment. And they looked, the, even the look of third line looked very harsh. I asked her why she was on third line. She told me she had, um, she was allergic to some of the treatment regimens in first line because in first and second line because sometimes you find the treatment regimens in first and second line they've not left each other so much so it's like they, they're kind of mixed up so if you're not working with tenofovir then they're mixing it up with something like atazanavir so that it makes the whole combination that is the whole thing when i say tenofovir and atazanavir i hope that you have followed me from the beginning and you know that i am talking about types of arvs right so they're over 60 types of ARVs and that is why if you're failing on this particular regimen the doctors will try and find you a regimen that is working for you so that is how that line comes in right but the problem is that line does not have specific regimens they have to deal with the medication that you actually have never tried at all and most of the time, some, even at some point, uh, when, when I stopped taking my medication, and my doctors told me, uh, if you go to second line, just know that with third line, you utakuna bahatisha. I don't know whether they were um, threatening me, <laughs> but yeah. So third line is harsher. And you know that the long-term side effects of ARVs include liver and kidney failure. So they have that a lot. So that is the whole issue, the whole thing, like, the more the higher you go literally the higher you go the cooler it becomes so the higher you go with uh, arv treatment the cooler it becomes or rather the lesser options you have when it comes to treatment and for people like us who are in sub-saharan africa who ideally depend on uh what is it called donor funding for arvs we are always like unfortunate like basically the inequalities affect us more because we don't have a large range of ARVs at our disposal that is why you always have to ensure that if you're on fast line stay on fast line stick to fast line don't move away from fast line because the moment you go to second line complications start occurring stop when stockouts happen you literally face the music like there is no easier, there is no any other way I can put it except for saying you literally face the music. So, uh, what can you do to stay on fast line? Be adherent to your ARVs every other time. Unless you have allergies or rather the medication just refuses. And I told you that ARVs are very proud so sometimes they can just refuse you. It is not you, it is them. So, for that, for that kind of particular reason, then you can't really control anything. But for people on fast line, stay on fast line. Take your medication on time. Don't skip today. You're taking a 10. Tomorrow you're taking a 9.30. The following day you're taking at midnight. Have a specific time. Get an alarm. Your alarm helps you to be adherent. I even hear there is an app that reminds you. I think it's called Medi app. I am going to try and search it. There's an app that apparently helps you remember to take your medication. There's also those uh, those uh, tab the tab tab organizers. You can also get those so that you ensure that you're staying at least don't move away from second line. Like if things go bad, 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 bad on first line, then don't don't move away from second line because the moment you move away from second line, you're exposing yourself to more opportunistic uh, infections, you're exposing yourself to more of ARV side effects and that ideally for you as a client is bad. So up until this moment, I hope you have learned and you have understood why you might be taking one pill and your friend is taking three pills. Just because a person was born with HIV does not mean that they need to take one pill. I am just a lucky person. <laughs> Trust me. The thing about me stopping my treatment for two years and going back and still being the same, that is just luck. And some people are just lucky, but it has nothing. Some people stop and they find themselves straight on third line because sometimes even on second line, there's no regimen that can work for them. So let us continue staying adherent. Let us continue staying undetectable because you know that when you are undetectable, you cannot transmit HIV sexually to your partner. And that ideally is our goal, all of us, right? So from me to you, I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video up until this particular end. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and if you relate to this comment, or sorry, if you relate to this video, please continue putting on your 
notifications on so that next week we meet again with a brand new video and if there's a video you want me to do please let me know in the comment section bye bye and adios